guys, Rhonda Draculas here, RK3 Designs, and do I have a fun finish for you guys. I've done a couple of videos where we've used white and pearl, but then I got an email and it was for a little girl's bathroom. She wanted to use pearls and some um, soft colors, purples and light blues. And her little girl's favorite thing in the whole wide world were unicorns. So we're gonna do unicorn granite. Okay, so this is gonna be a lot of really fun colors. What they all have in common is they are a pearlescent type of color. Very shimmery, very pearly. So we're gonna start off with our regular Stone Coat Countertop Mica Powder in Pearl. Then we're gonna come in with a regular Stone Coat Countertop Mica in White. Then we'll come in with Stone Coat Countertop Mica in Violet Pearl. So what you'll see is as you pour that, you're gonna see hints of violet, almost like a hologram. So when you change the direction, you'll see the paint change. We'll come in uh, with, with what we call interference colors, which the main color will be, uh, like this is an interference purple. So your main color you're gonna see is purple. However, you're still gonna see some pearl factors with that. So we have a, a interference purple, interference blue, a light purple, which is really almost a um, fuchsia. But when you really look at it, you get a, a pearlized color of purple. This is probably my favorite of all the colors right here. Really pretty. Then the good old faithful Diamond Dust by Stone Coat Countertop. I mixed it pretty concentrated, so we're gonna have lots of sparkles in this. So let's get started. I wanna lubricate my board so that our epoxy flows really easily. And I'm gonna lubricate it with two different colors. I'm gonna start with my pearl, and I'll come back with white. And I'm only laying a, enough product so that when I heat this up a little bit because my temperature in my shop is about right at 70, so it's a little bit cooler. So I wanna heat it up so it moves a little easier. And I'm gonna take a stick. I don't need this to be thick at all. All I wanna do is get some type of material on the board. Not worried about 100% coverage. I'm not worried about one area being thicker than the other area. I'm only trying to get product on the piece for movement. Now we'll come back and start adding our colors one at a time. Very random, the way that I'm pouring these on the board. I wanna have little pockets. I don't want just fine strings. I want pockets of color. And you'll see why as we lay all our colors down. This is white. Uh, let's come with a, a bright color now so we can kind of start seeing where all these colors are gonna start laying down. Now I'm kind of filling in where there's no color, not really overlapping my colors. I'm filling in where there's blank areas. That was my uh, light purple. And let's come in with Violent Pearl. This board is about three square feet. So I use three ounces per square foot of my Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. This happens to be Craft Coat. I use Craft Coat a lot 
when I'm doing sample boards. It's an inexpensive product to practice with, to do samples with, or something that you're not concerned with UV protection. This is strictly used for practice uh, and craft pro projects. Here's interference blue. So you can see we're really starting to get a lot of color on this board, but I'm doing it in blocks. I'm not trying to overlap. Obviously some are overlapping, but not intentionally am I overlapping these colors. I love the pearl essence colors because they just add so much depth to a piece. Now this piece, granted, it's not something that you're gonna use every day in your kitchen. This is not something that's gonna be for everybody, but this is a piece that came by request for a little girl's bathroom. You may tell yourself, well, why would I put something in a little girl's bathroom when she's gonna outgrow it in just a few years? I have an answer for that. The really neat thing about this product is if I decide or the homeowner decides in a few years that now they want to give that same bathroom a face look, a facelift, sorry, for now their teenager, all you have to do is come in, lightly sand the surface, repaint it with bare paint and primer in one, re-pour, and you have yourself a brand new countertop, a brand new look for that bathroom. All right, diamond dust, my favorite. Now the diamond dust, I am gonna literally drizzle it everywhere because I want sparkles all throughout this piece. Okay, can never have too many sparkles. Especially in a little girl's room. Okay, voila, here you go. I'm gonna walk away, just kidding. So now we have all of these beautiful colors on this board, a lot of fun colors. I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit. Again, it's a little bit cool in my area. I wanna just help uh, the epoxy heat it up a little bit, help with the fluidity, and it's gonna help on my next uh, step. So I have a plain Bondo spreader. Uh, you could definitely use your hands if you wanted to come in with just your hands and manipulate your epoxy. You could definitely do it like that. I like to use the Bondo spreader. It's quicker for one, it's less messy. And I just like the look that it gives me. So I'm gonna take it. All I'm doing is skip trialing. I'm not pushing down really hard. I'm almost just letting the weight of the Bondo spreader be all the pressure that I'm using. Cross hatching, different directions. Getting those colors to meld together. Then I'm taking those colors and pushing them over the edges. There, very pretty. And once again, after I do this, I leave it alone for a few minutes. Let all of those different mica powders, let them start to fight and start to really cause some uh, cool effects. So don't judge it, give it a little bit of time and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I've let it sit for just a few minutes. I'm gonna heat it up again. Get my bubbles, little micro bubbles. And then I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. If you're doing this on a countertop that's in place and you can't lift it and, and use gravity, that's fine. Just use a heat gun, you'll do the same thing. I'm just heating this so that I can grab my edges, let, those, uh, let that product run off the edges. Also, it softens my piece a little bit. I'm not wanting a lot of movement, just a little bit, just to give a neat pattern. You can even come in with your cups if you have extra, use those on your edges. 
utilize all that material. Okay, so I really like how this is starting to move and meld and really get um, some pretty soft effects. Our next step will be what we call put a granite look over this whole piece. And I like to do that after my product has set up for about 20 minutes. Uh, if you're in a really warm environment, it might be a little less than that. But today we're at about 70 degrees in here and uh, I'm gonna let this product sit up for about 20 minutes and I'm gonna come back and we'll do the fracture. Okay, so we've come back. It's actually been about 15 minutes. I'm using the craft coat as opposed to the regular stone coat countertop epoxy. Your craft coat, in my opinion, and my um, kind of my use is that your, your work time's a little bit shorter than in the regular stone coat countertop epoxy. So this has been about 15 minutes. I love this and actually this right here could be a finish on its own. We don't have to go to the next step, uh, which would be to actually take this marble and turn it into a granite. But uh, I love the subtleness of these colors. I love how they're mold, uh, melding together and it's just really, really pretty. But we are gonna go to the next step um, as requested by the email for the little girl to have unicorn granite. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take white spray paint and we're gonna take pearl and white mica powder. I mix those two together. Uh, in combination, I got about a quarter ounce of the powder and I mixed it with eight ounces of 91% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I really like mixing pearl and white mica powder together. It really makes a very, very pretty accent when you go to fracture over the top of a piece, which is what we're gonna do. So here we go. White spray paint. Make sure it sprays really well. I'm gonna come over. I'm not doing it super thick. I can definitely see my finish underneath here. Now, I wanna come in with big drops. So I'm taking uh, in my hand and I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna drop over the top of my white spray paint. Now that I have big spots, now I'll come in with a finer mist and I'll fill in. And then I'm literally gonna leave this alone. I want this to move, tell me which where, where it's going, and then I'll come address um, the piece five minutes. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so it's been just a few minutes. I'm really liking where the pattern's going, but I see a lot of the mica powder sitting on top. So I'm gonna break up that mica powder with um, clear isopropyl alcohol. I have it set to a very fine mist, and I'm just gonna go back over. And now it's gonna just take that and fracture it a little bit more, but now I'm gonna spread out the mica that's on top it breaks it up because this is just clear. So I really like that a lot better. I, I like how I have some areas of thick uh, granite, and then I like how I have some really big open areas so that you can see down into the color. So we'll wait a little bit longer and see where it goes. Okay, another uh, thing I really like to do is cause some natural fault lines or fracture lines. And I'll do this if I had some extra material left in my cup, I could pull it from the cup. If not, utilize those drips. So I'm gonna take my drips from underneath and I'm gonna run them over the top of my piece. Okay, so I really like this. I really like how the fault lines are so, so subtle that as the piece continues to move that you'll barely see that. Okay, so we can definitely stop here. This is actually the look she was going for and I believe we nailed it. But I do wanna come in for those of you that maybe suffer from the same thing that I suffer from, which is never knowing when to stop. I'm gonna take this one corner and I'm gonna add a different color. I'm gonna fracture a different color. And this color is 
berry pink. So just a little bit, it may not be what I'm looking for. You guys tell me what you think in the comment. Should I stop here or go to the next step? So I'm coming with berry pink and just plain isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to spray just this edge right here and then I'm gonna come over and hit it and it's gonna fracture and then I actually want some bigger fractures. So I'm gonna come in with my hands so I get some bigger fractures. All right, very cool, very cool. That's a different way to just bring in another color on top of this finish and get some different fracture lines. So if you're doing a sample for a customer or for yourself and you're gonna take this to scale, this is one way that you can do your sample boards. Uh, each little area maybe have a different technique, different color. That way when you sit back and go, you know what, I really like this or I really don't like that, so I'm not gonna put that on my big uh, piece that I'm actually gonna do. This is how you do that. This is how you learn. This is how you experiment what colors work best. So what we'll do is I'll take this sample piece, I will hand it to my customer. Now we have two different finishes. We have one that just has the white fracture and now we have one with the white and the pink fracture. She can put it in her bathroom. She can leave it in there for a few days, see what it looks like, see what she likes. And when she comes back to me, I know where to go. Even though I went a couple of steps farther than what I originally thought I was gonna do, I do like the finish. Um, so if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for future notifications. Remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.